And today's story we're going to do the story of redemption, or you're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. In this program, we'll be discussing what the straw man is, how to take control of your straw man, and why it makes any difference to do so. The straw man is defined in Black's Law Dictionary, the sixth edition, as, quote, a front, a third party who is put up in name only to take part in a transaction. Normal party to a transaction, the nominal party to a transaction, excuse me, quote. And in Barron's, the third edition, as, quote, the term is also used in commercial and property contexts. When a transfer is made to a party, the straw man, simply for the purpose of retransferring to the transfer in order to accomplish some purpose not otherwise permitted. In other words, you're going to get somebody to stand in for yourself because you can't do it. Black's Law Dictionary, 7th edition, defines person, quote, person as, quote, an entity such as a corporation created by law and given certain legal rights and duties of a human being, a being, real or imaginary, who for the purpose of legal reasoning is treated more or less as a human being, also termed fictitious person, juristic person, legal person, moral person. Those are the, quote, those are the definitions of person. So while we think person is the living soul, person can be a corporation. And when you see the word person applied to you, more than likely it's being applied to you in your corporation sense. The concept of the straw man was born in 1933 when Franklin Delano Roosevelt decreed an executive order which confiscated gold from the people. With Executive Order 6102, Roosevelt made private ownership or hoarding of gold illegal. Of course, his order only had jurisdiction, which is control, within the federal zone, which is Washington, D.C., the Virgin Islands, Guam, Puerto Rico, and American Samoa, or in other words, the federally controlled territories. Now, when you see the word territory being bantered around nowadays, they want you to think that you live in a territory because it's only then that the corporation, United States, can have any jurisdiction or control over you. Roosevelt created Social Security, which helped to further this country's march towards a communist-controlled government, whereby one man is forced to pay towards another man's upkeep, which especially benefits the elite who are in control. One of the ten planks of the Communist Manifesto is that all property is held by the state. This is currently in place as witnessed by the deed of trust on our homes. You will see on that deed that we who have purchased our home are listed as tenants in common or joint tenancy. So if we are renting as tenants, who's the true owner? It is the state, which explains why the state can take your property from you for non-payment of taxes without a court case or due process, which is required under the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Every other plank of the Communist Manifesto is also in play here. And quickly are the ten planks stated in the Communist Manifesto and some of their American counterparts. One, abolition of private property and the application of all rents of land to public purposes. Americans do these things with actions such as the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, 1868, and various zoning, school, and property taxes. Also, the Bureau of Land Management zoning laws are the first step to government property ownership. You are listed as joint tenants on your deed, which means if you're a tenant, you're a renter, right? You're not the owner. You're not listed as the owner. Two, a heavy progressive or graduated income tax. Americans know this as a misapplication of the 16th Amendment of the United States Constitution. In 1913, the Social Security Act of 1936, Joint Res House Resolution 192 of 1933, and various state income taxes. We call it paying our fair share. Three, abolition of all rights of inheritance. Americans call it federal and state estate tax. 1916, or reformed probate laws and limited inheritance via arbitrary inheritance tax statutes. Four, confiscation of, all, of the property of all emigrants and rebels. 
Americans call it government seizures, tax liens, public law 99570 of 1986, executive order 111490, sections 1205, 2002, which gives private land to the Department of Urban Development, the imprisonment of terrorists and those who speak out or write against the government, 1997 crime terrorist bill, or the IRS confiscation of property without due process, the Fifth Amendment. Asset forfeiture laws are used by the DEA, IRS, and ATF. In other words, if the government thinks you're an enemy, they can confiscate your property. Five, centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. Americans call it the Federal Reserve, which is a privately owned credit debit system allowed by the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. All local banks are members of the Fed system and are regulated by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, another privately owned corporation. The Federal Reserve banks issue fiat money, money paper money, which has no value because there's nothing behind it with fiat money, and practice economically destructive fractional reserve banking. Six, centralization of the means of communication and transportation in the hands of the state. Americans call it the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, and Department of Transportation, DOT, mandated through the ICC Act of 1887, the Commissions Act of 1934, the Interstate Commerce Commission established in 1938, the Federal Aviation Administration, Federal Communications Commission, and Executive Orders 111490, 10999, as well as state-mandated driver's licenses and Department of Transportation regulations. Yes, the state controls all of the airwaves. Seven, extensions of factories and instruments of production owned by the state. The bringing into cultivation of wastelands and the improvement of the soil generally in accordance with a common plan. Americans call it corporate capacity, the Desert Entry Act, and the Department of Agriculture. Thus read controlled or subsidized rather than owned because the Department of Agriculture pretty much controls what the farmers do, don't they? This has easily, is easily seen in these as well as other Department of Commerce and Labor, Department of Interior and Environmental Protection Agency, Bureau of Land Management, Bureau of Reclamation, Bureau of Mines, National Park Service, and the IRS control of business through corporate regulations. Eight, equal liability of all labor established to industrial armies, especially for agriculture. Americans call it minimum wage and slave labor like dealing with our most favored nation trade partner, i.e. Communist China. We see it in practice via the Social Security Administration and the Department of Labor. The national debt and inflation caused by the communal bank has caused the need of a two-income family. Women in the workplace since the 1920s and the 19th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Associated Socialist Unions, Affirmative Action, the Federal Public Works Program, and of course, Executive Order 11000. Nine, combination of Nine, combination of agriculture with manufacturing industries, gradual ab abolition of the distinction between town and country by a more equitable distribution of the population over the country. Americans call it the Planning Reorganization Act of 1949, zoning, Title 17, 1910 through 1990, and super corporate farms, as well as Executive Orders 11647, 11731, 10 regions, and Public Law 89136. These provide for forced relocations and forced sterilization programs like in China. 10. Free education for all children in public schools. Abolition of children's factory labor in its present form. Combination of education with industrial production. Americans are being taxed to support what we call public schools but are actually government force tax funded schools. And why would the government want to educate your children except that they want to give them the information they want? Under House Joint Resolution 192, no one could pay their debts anymore as dictated under the law of the United States Constitution, which proclaims in Article 1, Section 8-5, only Congress has the authority to, quote, coin money and set the value thereof.